Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, I am Docs and this is Joe Devers Lone Wolf. In the previous episode we have fought some Gax, got to know a damsel in distress, not so much in distress, she's got a cool crossbow, and now we will probably get to fix a sabotaged elevator, but let us get on with our story and we'll see what exactly we need to do. She has one of the parts in her pocket. It is the compression valve. The other two parts are in separate locations in the village. Leandra tells you that Tarlor the sheriff has the control handle and that she hid the drive chain in the foundry, near the ore smelting works, a large building located close to the cliff edge. Swipe. Yep. Without these parts, the elevator is useless. The Gyax cannot return to the forest floor. They are trapped here. The cliff is steep and sheer and is too treacherous to descend by rope. Leandra is anxious to rejoin her father and the others who are now hiding in the mines. Rockstarn is far too dangerous a place for her to stay here any longer, but she is surely aware that the only way down to the forest floor is by using the elevator. The one that she sabotaged, you know, obviously. To do this, she must have all three of the missing parts so that she can refit them and get the elevator working again. Let us make our choice. You ask Leandra if she works as her father's assistant. You are impressed by Leandra's skills and you ask her about them. You feel the urge to move on, there's no time to lose. Now let's chit chat a little bit with the girl. Why are you so skilled, baby? You tell her that you are very impressed by the courage she has shown. Your compliment makes her smile, but only a little. It's the first time you have seen her relax her stern expression. How have you been able to survive in a village full of enemies, you ask? Leandra smiled broadens. I followed my father's footsteps as an inventor, but my... Work is, how shall I say, less theoretical and more personal. <laughs> she flicks back her cloak to reveal her holstered crossbow. I'm a crack shot with this. It's kept me out of harm's way so far, but now I have only a few bolts left. My ammunition is running out fast, and so too, I fear, is my luck. She reaches to a velvet pouch hanging from her belt, from her leather belt. She clicks open its clasp and takes out a small metal cylinder which she hands to you. I think this compression valve would be better off in your safekeeping. Please keep it secure, our lives may depend on it. You take the compression valve and store it carefully in your backpack. Leandra stares directly into your eyes and says, I am determined to join my father and my people in the mine. If I, you have come here to pursue the raider and avenge the destruction of the, uh, the destruction they have wrought, is that not so? If you help me, then I will help you. You are going to need a working elevator to reach the forest floor. Without it, you will not be able to discover the reason for this attack. Hmm. Leandra says, when the Gyaks discovered that I had sabotaged the elevator, they were furious. In their blind rage, they vandalized the pump room and the boiler house. I must go there and make good any damage to the pump and boiler. It's no good replacing the missing parts if there's nothing to power the elevator. Eh, through that. And while you are taking care of that, I shall search for the missing parts, you reply. Leandra nods her approval. Remember, she says, Sheriff Tarler has the control handle and the drive chain is hidden in the foundry. I had a little chance to hide it properly. There were two gags chasing me as I recall. I threw it among some other chains that were lying on the floor. It's very different to these chains, it's smaller and is well oiled. The foundry chains are dry and have much bigger links. Very good, this will help me to find the parts, you reply. Your immediate tasks are now clear. You must find Sheriff Tarler and retrieve the control handle and you must go to the foundry and find the dry chain. Okay. Oh, level up. Okay, I'm a bit confused about what happened. Let's take a look. So I have, I have gotten intelligence because I have used, I have chosen the intelligent way to do things a couple of times, right? Then I chose to hide at one point, I think it was dexterity. 
and this is oh and I use the the summer sword the summer sword skill once so I got this uh, okay okay continue yes we'll continue blood on the snow chapter two Leandra prepares for the mission. She gathers up some food and some tools and she puts them in her backpack. As she is fastening the flap, she says something which surprises you. When I saw you for the first time, I thought you were a grown man, but now you seem really young to me. Leandra shoulders her backpack, then she picks up a stiletto dagger and slips it inside her belt. There's an old tunnel in the cellar of this house, she says, and it runs all the way to the foundry. My father and I often use it to go there and buy the bronin and iron we need for our inventions. You can use it as, well, to reach the foundry without having to take your chances out in the open. Or you can come with me and I'll show you where the sh sheriff's office is. The foundry on your own or the sheriff's office with Leandra. The choice is yours. Yes, well, pretty girl asks me to go there. I'll go there. Not a problem. Okay, that's the foundry and this is the sheriff's office. Okay. This is the foundry and this is the sheriff's office. We'll go. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let's go with Leandra. She's got a cool crossbow. Oh. Your, cro your crossbow is nearly empty and when it is, you'll all, all you'll have to let. Uh, all you'll have left are your ruits and a dagger to use against the Gyaks. No, I cannot let you risk that alone, you say, with a forceful tone. Leanda starts to protest, but you cut her off in the middle of her first sentence. We shall live together and that's the end of it. As soon as you can show me where the sheriff's office is, we shall split up. I will look for Tarlan, you will go to the boiler house. Is that clear? Perfectly clear, she says with more than a trace of resentment. You draw your weapon and move to the door. Leandra stays by, stays by the window and scours the street for sign of Gyax. It looks deserted, she says. Very well, follow me and stay close, you reply. You pull open the front door and pause to make sure that Leandra is... with you. She is standing in the doorway, her face frozen and expressionless. Then you hear a noise that make your heart skip a bit. Gyax are emerging from the shadows of the neighboring houses and they are fast closing in on all sides. Where's the sheriff's office? You shout, demanding Leandra tell you before a fight ensues. She points along the main street towards the end of the village at the cliff's edge. On the left, a hundred yards or so. This is all she can say before the first of the gags come running at you with their weapon held ready to strike, blows it to your head and chest. Run, you shout, and Leandra is suddenly galvanized into action. She sprints away across the street as the gags surround you and press home their surprise attack. Okay, so luckily we've gotten some upgrades, so now we can fight properly. Let's begin. Let's see how many are there. Okay, why do they get the the advantage? This is annoying. Okay, melee attacks. In order to perform a precision directional action event correctly, wait for the arrows to overlap, then click and drag as suggested on the screen. Okay. Oh. So, I... I Okay, so there's three of them. Okay, then let's start. No, but on you. With this one. This one has... Click, 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 and click. Okay, so... That was a, a, a nice one. And now I want one of these. This should a heavy blow. Oh man, I can't I can't actually believe it that Yep. 
I want that guy dead because if it's not dead. Okay. So. What can I do now? I want to melee attack this guy. Yep. I missed it. Damn it. No. Don't attack me. No. Okay, come, come to me, my beautiful pet. No. Okay, I need to heal. Oh. Okay, so I'm screwed. Yep, pretty much so. I made a big mistake. And that will cost me. Hmm, or maybe I can... No. No, 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 yep. Yep, I got owned. And I got owned badly. Yeah, your adventure ends here, unfortunately. It's not over yet. Restart battle. Okay, let's see how we can what how how we can do. This guy and this. Oh, I clicked too fast. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, you're the target, and oh, okay. And let's fill this up fast. Okay. Can I hit this guy again? Or can I not? I can probably can. Yep, and he's dead now. So he won't be able to attack me anymore and I want to hit this other guy. Yep, so I avoided a counter attack. And... Oh man, so I've missed... Oh man, I'm bleeding. No, this is not good. This is not good. The bleeding is not good. So, healing. Yep, healing is good. And... You. With you. Oh man, I keep missing this stuff. Okay, so have a quick attack and let's be done with it. And now this is going to be... Uh, no, no, I ain't got that kind of endurance. Oh boy, so the turn ended. Hmm. The turn ended. Okay, so what does this do? A wolf's charge. Wolf slice. No, but I want I want this. Okay, so I think I've I I, I was missing Oh uh, yeah, so I missed this stuff now. But now I can't use, I don't have any, okay, so, 
600 yes what and uh, hit him another yeah okay thank you very much thank you thank you i appreciate your uh, your confidence and uh, i'm sure we can uh, repeat the, this uh, process again and uh, come out victorious This game is awesome. I love it. Run, you shout. Oh, that was already done. Okay, iron. Take all. No, we're not discarding anything. And how do I get to my inventory? Is this it? Yep. I need to put some more stuff. Okay, so the inventory lets you change your equipment and arrange the items you will access from your belt in combat. To equip items or move them in your belt, just drag the item and release over the highlighted spot. Okay. So. Throwing knives. Oops. Okay. Pick lock. Freilund. And this is Lampspur. Oh man, this is pretty cool stuff actually. Okay, so we'll use this one for now. Oh, and my inventory is full. Hmm. Can I? No, can't put that there. Pine. Okay. Hmm. What else do I have here? Map, journal. Oh man, I'm... Oh my god, this is <laughs> this is going to hurt if we get in another fight soon. So, let's continue. You approach the door of the sheriff's office and take note of a painted shield that is fixed to the wall. It bears the distinctive emblem, emblem of Rockstar. Three crossed sledgehammers on a white crossed field. Beneath a slate-roofed porch, the main door is held ajar by a booted foot. It belongs to the body of a dead man lying just inside the entrance. The stripes sewn onto the sleeve of his high-colored jacket tell you that this is the Sheriff Tarler. This is Sheriff Tarler. He has been stabbed fatally in the back by a sharp gyak sword. You push open the door and step carefully inside the dead man's office. A search of his pockets reveals nothing. They have already been emptied. You sense that his personal items have been taken by the same gyak that took his life. You drag Tar Tarler's body away from the entrance and push the door shut. The front room of the office is where the sheriff used to deal with daily matters of law and order in Rockstar. Now those days are sadly gone. The room is dominated by a large desk made of some landing oak, beautifully engraved with provincial emblems and the personal crest of some landing heroes past and present. In a corner of the room you can see a large wooden chest with iron fittings and at the back of the room opposite the main door, there is a flight of broad stone steps that lead down to the gaol, gaol cells below. This is where prisoner, prisoners are held before trial. Let us do the intelligence part. You stand behind the, the oak desk and pick one of several scores that are heaped upon the table's green leather surface. You unfurl it and begin to read the contents. It is a death warrant for a man called Merok Gilad, a thief who had been found guilty of murdering two of the sheriff's reeves, his deputies, who had chased Gilad and his accomplices to their hideout in the sunken forest. You read that Gilad pleaded innocent when accused of the crime. He claimed that the reeves were murdered not by him, by Gyax. Hmm. Who would have thought? Okay, so... At the bottom of the scroll there is written in Sheriff Tarl's hand the date of Gila's execution. It is today's date. Hmm, interesting. I attempt to pick the lock. Let's see what we can get out of that. 
locked stuff. Let's see if my master pick lock skills can a little bit more. And that's it. Yep. Yep. My master skills did it again. You managed to open the chest. It seems that the sheriff had made provision to withstand an attack by sheltering inside his office. However, when he was compelled to organize resistance to the attack, he left the office with fatal consequences. Clearly, these supplies will be of no use to him any longer. Ooh, let's see what we get. Oh, so... Take all? No, come on. How, how can I not have... Enough space. What did I do? No, dude. Go back to the open. Loot. Can be equipped in the offhand. Take. Ah, okay. Okay, so how can I check my inventory like this? And what if I want to get rid of some stuff? Where can I get rid of it? How can I get rid of it? Uh, I think, yes, yes, I want to discard that item. Because I want more room to get superior leather. Okay, no. Oh, so I can eat and drink now. Wow, this is cool. So, 2050 to 312. 28350. 2050. Okay. Armor bonus surprise. Okay, so. Okay, so this is more like it. This is more like it. Okay, and I have two, two empty spots now. Loot. I want this guy. And uh, I want this guy. And now let's go to the inventory and drink that potion. I want to drink this potion. Yep, now, now I feel a little better about this whole situation. Okay. And now, can I loot the rest of this stuff? Take all. Yes, I can. You descend the steps and arrive at the guard room, rough hewn from the granite bedrock. It is lit by an oily torch that radiates dull amber light. It is sparsely furnished with a table, two chairs and a food cupboard. There are two cells adjoining the guard room. One of them is empty, but the other is occupied by a tall man with a long beard and strong calloused hands. Cal calloused hands. His name has been chalked on the board fixed to the door of his cell. Merok Gilad. Okay, so we have found Merok Gilad. And in the next episode, we are going to see what the guy actually did not do, but the Gyax did. And how he can help us proceed in our quest. But until then, I am Docs. This is... John Devers, uh, Lone Wolf, and I will see you next time. And until then, I wish you all an awesome day. Bye bye.